I've spent the last three and a half days um, plotting out the cutting that needs to be done along these contours to match the ceiling and uh, it's time to start making some noise. It's a Saturday morning and it's going to get loud and it's going to be pretty uncomfortable and one of those uh, penultimate moments in a build like this where you cut into all your good work and hope the friggin' hell you've got it right. I'm going to get my cutting tool and do some initial cuts into this port head module. It is a difficult area. I've got a lot of contours, plus I've got a hatch in the top there that doesn't seem to be wanting to line up properly. I'm a bit concerned about where that's going to fit, but I'm not going to know until I drop it down. This whole forward starboard area is, is quite complicated. There's a whole heap of intersecting bulkheads, including the wing frames up in the fore deck, uh, the cross bulkhead, the dog leg bulkhead, and then I've got the head and the shelving unit in behind there. So here I'm cutting through three bulkheads at once. Very difficult to get the depth. Um, you can see the amount of uh, uh, very careful cutting that I'm doing here, trying not to cut an area that really doesn't need to be cut and cutting these curves um, the only tool to do it with was really the um, the oscillating tool. The jigsaw is an option, uh, but certainly that oscillating tool, though it is quite laborious, really keeps the dust down, and that's been one of my key processes in here is trying to keep the dust down because there's going to be enough of it into the future. Imagine every tool you've ever owned and five times that, that's what you need to build this. Mate, I've gone through everything. You can imagine it. Um, and it's getting hot, so that's why I'm trying to get this done so that once it's sealed down, I can temperature control the inside. I'm sort of hoping that, yeah, getting these contours, man, it's gonna be a massive job. We've got, um, this is going to be the hardest part, this whole front section, because there's five, six bulkheads in here. And I'm going to get my skill saw. Go over the top. Yuck. That's taken me a day. <laughs> so I estimate probably a good week to cut all this out, maybe a few days now. I've got a method and I think I'm uh, and I'm in that front compartment. That's more important that I'm actually in there. I can now address all these issues pretty quickly and I know the sort of the method with the saws I need to use and the oscillating tool at a bare minimum. Um, now I've got to work out if I can actually get in there. I've got um, exactly 50 centimetres. Uh, last time I looked, I should fit, but <laughs> who knows? It's not so much getting in, it's getting back out. And if I can get in there, it means I can work my way across the whole bloody job. Uh, no 
Marche pas bien. Tout qui va. Ici donc. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> Somehow I knew this day was coming. <laughs> oh, actually it's gonna be a week. Um, wedged up in here, measuring and cutting these bulkheads and there's not a lot of wiggle room in here, uh, especially for me. But luckily, um, 50 centimeters, I should have really had about 70 centimeters and I could have probably stood up on my knees but anyway i'm going to be in here for quite some time um, measuring the cutoff point for this bulkhead and when you actually see how low it really is you start to realize um how little storage space you think you've got a lot but you actually end up with a lot less once you start working on the finishing part of the boat and uh, and, that, and that's actually quite good because there's not a hell of a lot of storage space up in the front here but certainly a lot more than I would have on a conventional cat and what this has done by having this storage space up here for lightweight things like sails and fenders and the works is it's actually increased our living space um, that's a that's a good thing and also can have its, uh, its downsides as well because there certainly are wet lockers right in the bow of the boat but then you know which locker aren't um, I've, I've got a bit of work to do up in here I do have to cut these contours along here and uh, really start to work right away across. I've got, uh, in fact, I've got five bulkheads that I'll need to be trimmed. Uh, this first one I'll probably get done today. I'll probably try and do one every day, at least get it marked out, and then at the end of the day, when it gets uh, to the point that I can make a lot of noise, I'll get in and do it. But this one here, and I've got the one over on the forward front there, the one sitting up on top of the crash bulkhead, that's got to be trimmed as well. Certainly a hell of a lot of work to be done in here, and uh, luckily the space is big enough for me to fit in, or uh, Janet will be in here. Huh. At least it's comfortable to lay down in. Uh, it's pretty much the only space I've got. It's, uh, it's getting a bit lower as I go towards the front. I'm trying to get as accurate a measurement as possible. I know um, in reality I'm going to need four or five millimeters of space, but once I do the cut line, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure. I'm gonna to have to go through the hatches here to, to do the final seal here once I drop this down, but uh, certainly it is all accessible. The other side's not going to be, but composite angle along a lot of these flat sections is going to increase my adhesion to the deck. Yeah, it's an interesting position to be in. I'm gonna be in here for quite some time, so just get on with it. laying down on the job. Um, <laughs> having the right tool for the job is critical, especially when you're in a shit location like this. I've got a problem. My bulkheads are 20 mil foam and they've got four layers of glass. There's like 300, 600, 300, 600 on each. And that's how we got away from using plywood up in the bow here. Because they were longitudinal, not compression bulkheads per se, the surveyor actually agreed that we could laminate with 20 mil H80 foam. And those, uh, so those laminate schedules give me exactly the strength I need uh, without having a, a, a huge weight penalty. The problem I've got is I could get a, a, a small 100 mil or 10 centimeter grinder in here and cut these and uh, and have this job in done in about two hours. Now. The other option I've got is these oscillating tools. Now these are just incredible, and uh, these renovator type oscillating multi-tool things are just sensational. But the issue I've got is that this face is really only two centimeters. And what's actually holding me back from cutting through on the other side and having to get climb over into there? Um, yeah, I don't really think it's an option at the moment because it's only about 25 centimeters high. Uh, because I'm cutting 15 centimeters off. So this bloody lip here, that, that's not so much the blade, it's the butt of the the tool that's the problem. If I could cut two millimeters off that or sand that flat, 
I reckon I'll be breaking through and I'll be doing half of the job. So I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Now, do I void a warranty on a product like this when I do that? Uh, yeah, probably. But the reality is it's not fit for my purpose. And the $200 tool, this Makita, is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm wasting $200 spending another two hours in here, to be honest at uh, you know my wage rate which is 100 bucks an hour <laughs> i wish yes yeah, so i'm going to take this down in the factory spend a bit of time on it get it nice and flat it, it looks like it's rubber or it's a compound plastic or something some sort of composite if i can f sand that flat on my belt sander i reckon i'm going to cut my time in here by probably 60 70 percent because i might be climbing over trying to double measure there's a whole range of things so yeah I mean, sometimes modific modifying tools is better than uh than racing out and buying a new one. And, and to be honest, I can't buy these blades, are the only blades that will cut through fiberglass and maintain an edge. I've tried the wood, I've tried the metal ones, you're blunting them within half a second of using them. Um, this tool, this particular blade I've had here for probably six months and it's still going strong and, and they're just fantastic these. I guess they're a, a plaster fiberglass cutter. Uh, I'm back and I've flattened this off with a belt sander, just tied it up and it works. It's a winner that goes straight through and I'm really bloody happy about it. Cameras hard work. <laughs> I'm generally not a winger, but this is turning me into a winger. It's gone from being super neat <laughs> to an absolute shit fight. Like, look at that. Oh man, I'm gonna clean that up in a moment, but I have now cleaned, pretty much done over half of the bulkhead cutting. Let's go and have a look over the top through the head here. Oh mate, what a job, oh my Jesus. That's one of the hardest things I've had to do in this whole build. I keep saying it, that every week it's come something even harder. So cutting these down, you can see I've done right to the third or the middle one, which is where the anchor uh, chain goes across. You can see it's actually a little bit higher because that's actually where that anchor chase fits. Now, I probably could have made it a bit easier for myself by cutting out these hatches to give myself a bit more light and a bit more airflow, but um, I'm worried about the safety of it up on the top, so I'm going to sort of endure it. And uh, like the good thing is, I can start from the other side now and work my way that way uh, from the port side back across this way now that I've got to that middle one. Um, it's going to be a little bit easier. There's a little bit more room on that side because we've got quite a large cupboard there rather than its head in the way. So yeah, uh, that's been, well, what an ordeal. But anyway, you can see how the contours are all going to fit here. It's like one of those um, uh, balsa wood or plywood stegosaurs that you buy that you've sort of put together. Everything's got to fit exactly right. And the only way to do it is I think the way I'm doing it, I'd like some advice. I think that spirit level and a laser and a and a pointer is pretty much it. I've come to the centerpiece of the build and that is generally the mast in this case and how that's going to integrate with that module, the deck, the window mullion and a whole range of other areas that I've got a little bit of an issue with right here. 
remembering that I have 30 mil foam under me here, un unlike the eight millimeters of solid glass, which was the original uh, craft I think was fashioned here. Um, that mast post there, the mast physically is a deck step mast. So it actually sits directly on the deck in this case and in most cases in catamarans and essentially it doesn't transfer through the deck it actually sits on a solid post or a bulkhead or a fast post underneath now my mast post as you've seen is a solid vertical box section um, triple laminated triple engaged through bolted to all the bulkheads spreading the load right across the uh the catamarans hull but in this case here um, complicating the fact is the extreme slope of my window mullion. It comes down like this, and imagine a mast having to sit directly on top of that. The way they got around this was to have a block of um, solid around about 100 mil thick at one end and tapering down, which allowed the mast to sit level on the deck of the boat. And then I guess it was glassed over. And uh, it's a bit hard to work out from the plans. I'm sort of running by, by guessing here. Now, in this case, I've actually decided that I don't like the look of that. I don't like the look of a big block of wood sitting on the front of my beautiful plastic catamaran and then a mast sitting on top of that. Somehow I've got to engage that block of wood into it. Then I've got a glass over it. Ultimately, it's going to crack. Ultimately, there's going to be rot, perhaps. Um, I want to eliminate all those issues. I've got a really solid base there. Um, one of the ways that I've thought I can get around this problem and make it look better and function better is by cutting a hole and inserting the mast onto a flat section. Now I'm thinking of doing that is that right here. Uh, I've got my mast post and I have actually got a template of the mast base uh, as it stands and then there's a plate that fits under that obviously with sheaves attached to it and I've got to allow enough room for all of my lines to operate around those. I'm going to cut out this section in the deck all the way down to here, thereby removing the slope and then make a box that'll then be placed in here, which will then be solid glassed all the way to the deck and fared and painted and gel coated obviously on everything else. And that will then create a flat post for my mast to sit on and allow all of the lines, the uh, the halyards and the works and the topping lift and all the things that come down here will allow it all to sit on a dead flat section outside of the hole rather than on a block of wood. Um, it's a bit scary, the idea of cutting a hole out of my boat, but it has to be done. Um, certainly to make it look good and function better as a sailboat, I think this is a better solution than having that block of wood with the mast just sitting on it. Now, the issue I've also got is that this, because I've gone for a thicker mullion here, this is actually an over-engineered mullion, but again, it's thicker. As soon as you go thicker, you lose internal space. Now, I've already cut the module down 50 mil to make it sort of sink into the floor a little more, and it's actually a better height, to be honest, in my opinion, for a boat. It's, it was way too high before, but now that means that this point here, 50 centimeters down, is going to engage here. So we're gonna have this face here open to us, but certainly not the whole face of this thing. Now, I, this is going to have to be trimmed along this line here anyway. So I'm gonna lose a bit of this ramp, but I'm actually prepared to sacrifice that for the extra strength and the better stiffness uh, modules that I have with this particular deck because of the extra laminate I put in it and the, uh, the far better sandwich construction that I have. But as a result, this will go from here down to about this height. So what we're going to have here is a box right here. It'll look a bit like this and the deck will be cut away. The mast sits directly on the deck with a metal plate underneath, with its base plate with another plate underneath that, engaged into the mast post and I'll have a beautiful, beautiful, neat deck up the top which will be an inserted box which will look a bit like this and are made out of foam. Who knows, I think it's a good experiment. Um, it's gonna be a great addition to this boat and, and it will actually bring the mast down a little bit, which is good, which actually brings that center of effort down because then I move the boom a little bit further down as well. So there's a whole range of things I'm trying to achieve here in one whole um, uh, exercise. Please understand this is only a proof of concept. This isn't the actual thing. 
<laughs> oh, no. You probably think you can do a better job than that. It's just to confirm to me that what I'm trying to do here is viable, and uh, it certainly is. I think that's you know probably about the best thing I can do. I can actually change the cosmetics of it once I get the insert put in um, and make it a little nicer. I was going to do a rounded one, but um, and kerf the foam. But to be honest, I haven't got enough room to do that. I've got to work within the confines of the window mullions. Very important that I don't mess with them um, even though this will actually increase the strength of this structure tenfold without adding a foam block or a wooden block on the top of it but yeah that'll, that'll look pretty good i think now have i mentioned for the hundredth time that i've used every tool that i've ever owned in this case i started this with a couple of drill uh, holes up through the deck just to find my starting point then onto a 125 millimeter grinder then onto the oscillating tool then back to the drill and then onto the jigsaw, all of which were needed as the curvature of the deck where I was cutting created its own very special set of problems. As I wasn't able to get through the required depth with the grinder, I then needed to move on to each tool to ultimately cut this out. It ended up being a bit of a bastardised effort and then I realised I'd cut the hole too small as I'd been reading the code, the product code um, number wrong on our quote for our mast and rigging setup. So I had to then remark it and recut the whole thing again. Due to the thickness of the deck, it's around about 40 millimeters thick at this depth because it's 25 mil of foam plus solid glass laminate. I'd actually reinforce this area particularly strong for the mast itself. I just wanted to thank you all for watching these videos. Um, the numbers have increased somewhat over the last few videos as I'm getting the deck built and everything. And I want to particularly thank the patrons. Uh, you guys have made all these videos possible. I simply couldn't be devoting the time without you guys supporting it. Now I have actually put up on the patron site a complete up-to-date walkthrough of the catamaran as it stands as of the 6th of December. So it's very up-to-date. It's a 20-minute video and it's up there on the patron site. So check it out if you want to have a look. And here's the mask placed underneath.